strong, he's still here for us. Amen. Amen. Let's worship him this morning. Let's sing this together. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence my life. vision one more time. Yes, well, you guys want to take a seat. Uh, we're going to move into our time of communion. And uh, so, and if you guys need, we have these uh, trays up here in the front of the church. You can grab some. There's some in the back of the room as well. You can just grab a communion element. Um, what we do here, we always celebrate what Jesus did for us. And I was, I was thinking about this the other day. It's, it's kind of like a, um, like a fulfillment of the Passover festival, if you think about that. Uh, remember the Passover is where the angel of death, in order to punish the Egyptians, the, or, or to make that point, that was the final plague, and the, the, the angel of death passed over all of the, um, uh, the houses, but if, but if they believed, and, and they went out and put the blood of the lamb on their doorpost, then it would pass over that house and not strike that home. And so uh, Jews kind of always celebrated that, and they would, they would eat this bread, and they would say something like this. They would say, blessed are you, O Lord, our God. King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And in doing so, they remember that God was their deliverer, that God was their provider. And, and what's cool is that the night of the Passover with his, uh, with his disciples, Jesus celebrated this many, many, many years later. Uh, he's right to, about to be put to death as the Passover lamb himself. And he kind of changes things when he says, he says something like this. He goes, you know, he, he t has this moment with this meal with his disciples and probably says the customary blessing, blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And then he says this, it kind of changes it. He says, this bread is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And, and Jesus kind of appropriates that, that bread to, to, to his body that's also coming from the earth. And it's this really uh, cool thing that's happening. He's, he's sort of foreshadowing what's going to happen. He's going to come from the earth, but he's also saying that it's, uh, he's the fulfillment of all those things. So when we do that, it's, it's, we're reminding ourselves that he's our deliverer. We're, we, when we take that together and he tells us to remember, we're, we're remembering that, that he is our provider as well. He, he is the one that takes care of us, and he's the one that rescues us from the angel of death. If you guys would uh, pray with me, and then we're going to go ahead and take our communion. God, we, we thank you, Lord, for 
who you are. We thank you for the way that you pursue us. God, will you help us to have the right heart right now as we remember what you've done for us? God, as we take your bread that's representative of your body, God, as we take your juice that's representative of the blood that you poured out on the cross, help us to do that, God, in a way that remembers that you are for us and that, God, you did that to to redeem us, to buy us back so that we could be your children. God, we love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys can go ahead and take your communion elements. The juice as well. Amen. Uh, Here at Hope, we have uh, several different ways to to give, but one of the things I was thinking about for this morning was, man, like, when we give, it's, we actually talked about it in staff meeting a little bit last last week. We were were talking about how um, nobody really is a self-made person, right? Like, nobody really has, um, you know, like a lot of times we, we like to take credit for our talents or abilities, or maybe you can even be tempted to take uh, uh, credit for the blessings that you've, you know, been able to occur, or maybe you've been able to uh, do financially pretty well and, and kind of feel like, man, I've done a really good job, and, and, and I'm sure you have, right? But all of those things that we have and are is because God blessed us with those. And so he gave us to be stewards of his gifts, stewards of his finances, stewards of his blessings. And we, in this culture, we get so caught up in, in, in having the blessings and we forget about the blesser so often. And so one of the things when we're giving to the Lord, it's what we're doing is we're reminding ourselves like, hey, this is not that God needs this, but it's, it reminds us that we are trusting him. Like, God, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give to you my first fruits. So I'm trusting that the rest of this is going to get figured out because it's, it's like a declaration of faith every time that we give to the Lord. So uh, I, I encourage you to do that. If you ever wondered why we do that, that's one of the reasons why we give and why it's so important because it helps us be a, a, a pass-through of God's blessings instead of, you know, hanging on to things so tightly. So let's go ahead and pray, and we'll uh, pray over this, this offering. God, we lift this up to you. Lord, we know that you can do immeasurably more, God, than we could ever ask or imagine. And God, we trust you that, Lord, when we give, God, your work is being propelled in all places around this, around the world, really. And we have missionaries we support all around the world. And that's part of what's going on. But God, really, we're, we're giving up our, our trust. And God, we're realizing that, that we're not the ones in control of all these things. God, you are. And, and it's a declaration of trust that you're going to provide for us. God, we love you. We thank you. We ask a blessing on this day and on the service in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, Hope. Good morning. We have a lot of awesome events coming up this week. So you are going to want to get out the camera apps on your phones and scan these codes. All of the information about the events that I am about to talk about are going to be right here in Hope today. And you can also open up the Hope app and find out the information there as well. On Tuesday, we are kicking back off our men's breakfast and Bible study. This is every Tuesday morning with Pastor Shane at 5.30 and 8. We would love to have you men there. And also on Tuesday, we are starting a brand new women's Bible study. This is going to be at 10 a.m. and 6.30 and also on Wednesday night on Zoom. So scan these QR codes. You can sign up for both of those today. This Wednesday night, we are kicking off our Wednesday night programming at Hope. Last week was the Youth and the Hope Kids kickoff, and we had an awesome time. And this week, we are starting our Wednesday night dinner. So beginning at 5.30 to 6.30, we will have a free family dinner. And then after that, at 6.30 to 8, we will break off into our life groups, our Hope Youth, and our Hope Kids programming. We can't wait to see you guys there. If you miss out on the women's conference, you can still check it out by watching the simulcast with other women of hope this upcoming Saturday, September 16th. So check out more details by scanning these codes. We all have a next step to take. If you're new with us here at Hope, texting welcome to this number above is a great first step. We'll get to know you a little bit better and we would love to connect you here with the Hope family. We love you guys. Thanks again for joining us today. We hope you have an awesome week. Well, good morning, Hope. It's good to be with you today. Um, I just want to talk with you for a quick minute about some things that have been going on uh, around Hope and, and been happening just this week. And many of you know that uh, 
Ben Scare, one of our elders, Ben Scare's grandma, and uh, Brendan Nurper's grandma, and, um, and Lisa Nurper's mother, and Stephanie Brunchen's grandma, and Shirley Schmidt here in uh, the crowd this morning, um, her sister-in-law uh, passed away uh, the other day, and funeral was yesterday, and I want to just take a minute, we're going to pray for them, but also um, about some other things going on. A lot of you know, some of you know, actually, um, many of you in this room may not, Billy and Caitlin Nykirk, a young couple that comes to church here, and they started coming this past year, and some of you may have met Billy at some of the men's breakfast and things like that. Caitlin his wife, her mother died unexpectedly the other night. And that funeral was uh, this weekend as well. And uh, they have a little four-year-old boy. And Billy's actually stationed in the Middle East right now. And so he came back in for this funeral this week. And uh, man, uh, man, tough stuff, you know what I mean? To lose your mother while your husband is in the Middle East, you know, and you've got a four-year-old boy with some special needs. And so a challenge for them, and we want to be praying for them. And Jackie Acock had some great news this week. Uh, well, some great news that some tests that she had done um, are doing well, and got some good news from some tests. Knowing that some procedures that are coming up soon are going to be less invasive, and so we're excited about those. And a lot of you've been praying for a lot of these things. And um, um, I, I know another one. Uh, man, I was at a funeral. One of my friends, uh, a pretty good friend of mine. Uh, passed away uh, the other day and uh, did his funeral the other day. And uh, they were in small group with Dee Dee and I, and our kids were growing up together, things like that. And uh, man, these things make you think about where we're headed, don't they? I mean, when we have significant things, when you're, even when you're going through things, they make you think about those things. And so I want to ask if you would, to bow with me for a word of prayer, we're going we're gonna to pray for different needs um, really quick, all right, and um, lift some folks up, and I'm going to ask if you would to bow with me for a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, you are a good God, and God, we have so many things going on and so many things that we have been praying about. God, I think about those who have lost people this week. God, the grief, the struggles, um, the reality of, of this life, and that it comes to an end and how important Jesus is and a relationship with you. Father, I also want to lift up those who are struggling, those who are having tests done. God, I lift up uh, Norma to you, God, and, and these challenges that she's been having and, 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 and she's praying and asking you to work in different things. And God, I think about folks who over time, over the last many months, have, have struggled, have lost people who are concerned and coming to you because of their wife or their mom or their their their, uh, um, their father, um, their grandchildren. Father, I think about the addiction issues. God, I think about the way you've done amazing things and taken care of people. And I thank you for things like seeing folks through significant car accidents lately and, and babies being born really early. Father, I, I, uh, I think about uh, the Kirchner family and... Uh, and, and their little boy who was born at two pounds, two ounces lately, a few, just a few weeks ago. God, thank you that he's growing and he's thriving and he's doing better and better. Father, uh, we thank you for little Rowan. And God, we thank you for the way you're strengthening him and growing his family, um, even away from home here. And Father, uh, we ask that you'd be actively working in the lives of all of, of the folks here at Hope and the people we've been praying for, but God, also, God, for the needs that we may not know exactly what they are. We know that you're a God who knows, and you're a God who knows the needs that are on the hearts of every person in here, needs that are far larger than our little corner of the kingdom here at Hope. And so, God, we ask you, to be actively involved in those things, and we thank you that you're a God who brings healing. You're a God who brings remission. You're a God who brings us to wholeness and gives us hope through your son, Jesus Christ. And God, we lift all these needs up to you, and we lift this teaching time up to you right now as well. And God, I pray we'd embrace it, and as a people, God, that we'd be more like Jesus because we've been in your word, we've been in your scriptures today, and God, I pray that we would be a people of your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends.
we talk a lot at Hope about we are a church, um, and uh, we are a church that is all about building our lives on the foundation of the scriptures, right? We're a church that's all about building our lives on the foundation of the word. Now, there's, and there are moments, right, in our lives, the ones that we just talked about, when you are facing and coming toward, um, man, the end of life, and you're in a position like our friend, many of you know Martin Reuter, right? And he's at this place in life where it looks like he's toward the end of life. It makes you really think. It's quite sobering. And man, when I sit down and talk with him, man, there's no, like, you know what I mean? Like, you could talk about a lot of things, but man, when someone's toward the end of life, when you're in moments where hospice is called in, it makes you keenly aware of our destination, doesn't it? Because we're all on a road. All of us are on roads. And today I want to talk a little bit about that. Now, I'm going to make a big statement. Here's what it is. And it's not going to seem like a big statement. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make this big statement. It's not even going to seem like a big statement, and here's what it is. Whatever road you're on determines where you end up. Your road determines where you end up. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wow, Shane, that's pretty deep, right? <laughs> Whatever road you're on, you will end up where that road takes you you will not end up where you intended to go. Have you noticed that in life? See, your road determines your destination. And I know some of you are thinking, hey, it's pretty intuitive. Okay, I'm with you. All right, Shane, I, I, I'm with you, you know. But, and I realize nobody in the room is like writing that down, right? You're not writing it down. You're not making a note because it just doesn't seem that significant. The road you're on determines your destination. Okay, and we're going to talk about that for a couple weeks. As a matter of fact, we're going to be at a place in the scriptures, largely, especially today, in a book called Proverbs. And Proverbs is in the Old Testament of the Bible, and it is a wisdom book. As a matter of fact, the Jewish people loved it so much because it was just wisdom. And they used it as a training manual even for young leaders. It's such, such a big deal. And here's the thing about this road concept, right? As obvious as that is in the world of geography, you know, that your road determines where you end up. Like, we all know that. That's why we have maps on our phone. It's why you unfold a map in, in the old days, right? And you look at your, because you know certain roads are going to lead you to certain places. It's really, really obvious when you're talking about maps, you're talking about geography. But all of a sudden, when it comes to other areas of our life, it's not like that, is it? Like when it comes to other areas of our life, we have a hard time applying that concept. And it's all through the Bible. Over and over and over, it's in the scriptures. Because this, this concept still applies. It applies to our financial lives, our dating lives. It applies to your marriage. It applies to how you raise your kids. It applies to your, applies to your education, to your profession, whatever it might be. Man, the same concept applies, and it's simply your direction determines your destination. And this new teaching series is called Directions. Because your direction determines your destination. And in the world of driving, we get that, right? Absolutely. We all know that. And to expand on it, again, your direction, not your intention, determines your destination. So what I'm saying is this. If you decide to load up, um, uh, man, uh, you want to go to the beach, so you load up your shorts and your swimsuit and your sunscreen and you get your flippers and you've got your uh, little snorkel thing and your goggles and all those kind of things and you load up your car with your beach towels and you get in the car and you gas up and then you because you want to go to the beach and then you load up that car and you get on I-55 North, you will not get to Florida, right? You're not. Why? Because that's not where that road goes. But we do that all the time, don't we? That's not where that road goes. And we've got to think about it. Because if I decide, when I leave Hope today, if I want to go over and I want to go to Thai House for lunch, Thai House is in Columbia, right? 
and I get out of hope and I get out here to Route 3 and I turn right because I want to go to Thai House, I'm not going to get there, am I? Because if turning right on Route 3 doesn't get me to Columbia, right? It goes to Waterloo. It goes somewhere else. And so here's the thing. That whole thing about going to the beach, man, it, if you get on I-55 North, you are not going to get to Florida. You're not. It doesn't matter if you go to church. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian. It doesn't even matter, does it? You won't get to Florida regardless of what your intention is. And everybody in the room would say, hey, Shane, I get it. We know that. Obviously, right? We know that. But here's what's so interesting. We get it when it comes to hiking. We get it when it comes to driving. But somehow, there's a total disconnect when it comes to other areas of our lives, when it comes to this concept. There's a total disconnect. But this concept relates to your financial road. Everyone's on a financial road. It applies to your marriage if you're married. It applies to your dating if you're dating or dating again. It applies to your profession. It applies to your health. I mean, this principle applies to every one of these roads that your direction, that makes sense, right? My direction, not your intentions, and this is hard for us in our society, not our dreams, not, not even our prayers, not your friends, right? Not your beliefs, okay? Your direction ultimately determines your destination. Because if I want to go to Florida and it's over here, what we do all the time in our lives is we get on this road over here saying, yeah, I want to go there. And we do it in our society all the time. And we are all at multiple levels of this in our journey. And we're going to talk about this for a couple weeks because there's a huge disconnect in people when it comes to where they want to end up and the roads we've chosen. Have you noticed that? And over and over and over. Man, I've talked with people whose marriages have blown up. And I've talked to people whose financial situation has absolutely exploded and blown up. And you have too, over the years. Like, you've listened to them, haven't you? You've listened to them, you've heard them, and sometimes people are so brokenhearted about the place that they've ended up. And you listen to them. As they describe the whole journey, like their whole life story, and kind of how they went there and how this happened, and you listen to them, or you maybe were friends with them. Maybe it was your children. Maybe it was your grandchildren. Maybe it was your parents. And you listen to them tell the story. You watch their journey, and you thought, you thought, what did you expect? What did you expect? And, there's contrast, and there's this contrast between people's hopes and dreams and exactly, I ended up exactly where my journey led me. Have you noticed that? That's the concept. And now, people come to this other place where they ended up. It's not where their hopes and dreams were. It's not where their intentions were. But they ended up at this place, and they're brokenhearted, and sometimes they're so angry at God because I'm not where I hoped I would be at this place in my life. But we think, if you didn't want to go there, if you, if you wanted to go here, why did you walk down that road? Because we tend to think that hopes and dreams and intentions will trump direction. But friends, the direction you choose determines your destination. Hey, let's look together at a scripture in Proverbs chapter 7. And we're going to park here for a little while. Proverbs chapter 7, starting in verse 6. Let's read what this scripture says. At the window of my house, I look down through the lattice. Now, here's Solomon. And we don't know if this is a parable or if it's a true story. Okay, He's seeing the sky, and it occurs to him, as he watches, it occurs to him what's going to happen. Now, you've had this experience in life before, right? Like, I was in Belleville a while back. And as I was at an intersection in Belleville, I, I just, 
I, 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 don't misunderstand me. I certainly didn't see the future or anything like that. But I just had this sense that this car wasn't going to stop. Haven't you had that happen? Like you just kind of saw this. It seemed like that car, I don't think that car is going to stop. And all of a sudden, man, you see this collision happen at the intersection. That's what happened to me. I, I could almost see it coming. All of a sudden, bam, there it was. It's kind of like when you're watching kids play. And you're watching these kids play at this family gathering or whatever it is. Maybe the parents aren't paying attention. They've got a ball. There's a table. It's got a vase on it. And, then all, and you can just see it. You just know it's coming. And then all of a sudden, bam, it just happens. And it's like you could just tell. You know what I mean? It wasn't like you saw it. You could just sense that that was about to happen. Solomon is illustrating this principle that we're talking about today. Solomon is absolutely in illustrating the principle that every road has a destination and the road that we take the road that we take determines our destination and Solomon goes on in verse 7 and he says I saw among the simple I noticed among the young men a youth who had no sense okay <laughs> it's a little harsh on the youth right no no but it, but it makes sense because students, teenagers, youth, right? A teenager doesn't have judgment. They lack judgment. And here's why. It's not because they're not smart. It's not because anything like that. It's simply that they don't have time or experience. No teenager has time and experience, right? They just don't. That's, that's what it is because they're only so old. So I want to just say this, whether you're watching online, whether you're here, man, teenagers, listen, the truth is, man, your parents... They have time and they have experience. You don't. And I know some teenagers are kind of like, yeah, they have time and experience, but look what they're wearing, right? Okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. So, hey, here's the thing. They may not have a lot of other things, but they have time and experience. And Solomon goes on in verse 8, he says this. He was going down the street near her corner, walking along in the direction of her house. At twilight, as the day was fading, as the dark of night set in. And listen, here's what's wild. You don't have to be a Bible scholar to anticipate what's going to happen, do you? You don't have to have even read the story before. This kid's walking down the street. Man, he's got this thing going. He's, got the, he's walking down the street, and he's got a soundtrack going on in his mind. And the soundtrack in his mind that's playing in his mind is like Born to be Wild or party like a rock star, depending on what generation you're in, right? And he's doing this whole thing. Meanwhile, he's thinking, oh man, this is all going great. Things are good. This is exciting. Meanwhile, Solomon is watching from a window, and he's talking through this, and he's got a different soundtrack going on up there. Solomon's watching this thing. He can anticipate what's going to happen, just like you can. And the soundtrack that Solomon's got going on up there is like the theme song from Jaws. You remember that music? dun dun Dun, 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 dun. And that's what Solomon sees. And there's a reason for the contrast between the kid on the street and Solomon in the window. And it's that Solomon is older, he's wiser. He knows the idea, the principle, the concept. And this kid thinks, man, this is an exciting event. And this older guy's in the window, and he's thinking, nope, it's not an event. It's a road. And every road has a destination. And this is a road with a very predictable destination. And in verses 10 through 14, the scripture goes on and says, Then out came a woman to meet him, dressed like a prostitute and with crafty intent. She's unruly and defiant. Her feet never stay at home. Now in the street, now in the squares, at every corner she lurks. She took hold of him and kissed him, and with a brazen face she said, Today I fulfilled my vows, and I have food for my fellowship offering at home. All right, listen, this means basically nothing to us, like culturally to us. However, basically what she's saying is a few things. I have money at home. I'm not after your money. I've been to the temple. And I have laid out my sin. And I've offered an animal. And God has forgiven me for all my sins in the past. That's what she's saying. I've dumped out my sin bucket. And I'm forgiven. And now I'm ready to fill it up again. 
with you. That's what she's saying. And every one of us, if we're followers of Jesus, if we've been walking this road and, and trying to live the Christian life, every one of us has done this at some level, at some point, in some capacity, that we had the sense that we know that we can come to God and God loves us and he'll forgive us and he has this giant eraser and he'll forgive us for our sins. And any time, we, all we have to do is come to him. And, we, and so we, we've all had a moment where we kind of, in a way, we didn't want to process it like this, but we thought, oh, I can live any way I want to, and I can come to God, and I'll still be all right with him. And that's what she's saying. She's saying that she's all set with God, and she's ready to fill up her sin bucket again. And look what happens in verse 15. She says, so I came out to meet you. I looked for you. And I have found you. And the kid on the street's got to be thinking, ha, she came looking for me. You're right? I'm the man of her dreams. This is unique. Man, this is, this is the stuff that stories are made of. And at this point, for the kid, the volume and the soundtrack goes way up, right? And in verse 16 through 18, it says this. She says, I've covered my bed with colored linens from Egypt. That sounds exciting. I perfume my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let's drink deeply of love till morning. Let's enjoy ourselves with love. He's thinking, am I dreaming? This is like being in a music video. It's like something right out of a movie, but it's real. And in verse 19, she says, my husband's not home. And he's thinking, yeah. I was assuming that, right? I mean, that's what he's thinking, right? But it says, my husband's not at home. He has gone on a long journey. She's basically saying, you don't have to run off in the morning. Man, we can have a couple cigarettes in the morning. We can, we can have breakfast. You don't have to rush off, anything like that. And she goes on continuing to talk about her husband. And look what she says in verse 22. He took his purse filled with money. And will not be home till full moon. With persuasive words, she led him astray. She seduced him with her smooth talk. And all at once, he followed her. Let's just keep it here for a minute. All at once, he followed her. And he's thinking, what's he thinking? He's thinking, man. She came looking for me, man. This thing is, this is awesome. This is an incredible event. And he's thinking, man, I'm like a celebrity. Man, I'm like a, I'm like a rock star walking into a club or something here. All eyes are on me. This thing is happening. This is like a dream come true. All at once he followed her. Like, like a rock star going into a club? No, 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 like an ox going to the slaughter. Oh, you mean like a celebrity walking? No, like a deer stepping into a noose. Let's keep going. Verse 23. All at once he followed her, all this things happened, until an arrow pierces his liver. Hey, that's kind of gory. And like a bird darting into a snare, little knowing it will cost him his life. And some of you are thinking, wait, Shane, man, you are talking like my, my dad or something from that window thing. You've got it wrong, man. This is just an event. This is just a date. Nope. It's not, it's not an event, is it? It's a road. And you're focused on the here and now. That's what's going on with that kid. And Solomon, he's focused on tomorrow. Two contrasting perspectives on the very same event. And look what it says in uh, verses uh, 24 um, through 27. Now then, my sons, listen to me. Pay attention to what I say. Do not let your heart turn to her ways or stray into her paths. Many are the victims. And he's thinking, what? Paths? Are you serious? This is not a path. Man, this is an event. And she says, it says, many are the victims she has brought down. Here's the deal. It's not a unique situation. And I know you're like, and here's the thing, right? When you're the kid, when you're in the moment, right? You're feeling things like, I've never felt this way before right? This is special. Man, this, man, th this is unique. 
she's my soulmate. And Solomon is going, nope, you are an idiot. This is so common, this is a road, and it's so predictable that it's laughable, and you're deceiving yourself to believe it's a unique experience just for you. Many, many are the victims that she's brought down. He's saying, buddy, you're just, you're a part of the crowd. Many are the victims she's brought down. Her slain are a mighty throng. Many, not necessarily with her, but this is a road. This is a direction. This is where it goes, the destination. This is so predictable that he's saying, I can, Solomon said, I can say without hesitation that you're like an ox to the slaughter. That's what's going on here. Her th house is a highway to the grave. Let's go um, leading down to the chambers of death. When we started reading this, you already knew where the story was going, didn't you? How'd you know? Because somehow, we know this when it's someone else, don't we? We can just see it in someone else's life. Have you ever been to a good counselor? Like a really gifted, good, solid counselor? So you know what happens when you do that? What, what, this is so common. Here's what happens. You, it, when you go to a great counselor, a really gifted counselor, an uh, uh, experienced counselor, you'll be telling your story, and then halfway through they interrupt you. And they'll say, sometimes they'll say, I bet when, when, when they did that, I bet you felt... And then you're like, why, yes, that's exactly how I felt. And then, and then I bet your husband or your wife or your boyfriend, I bet they did this. And then the person's sitting there and you're thinking, oh, my goodness, yes, that's exactly what they did. You are so incredibly smart. And the counselor's thinking, I'm not so smart. The deal is that I've heard this story 800,000 zillion times, and you're just like the last guy who left here an hour and a half ago that paid me $150 for the half hour, right? It's not unique. It's predictable, and it's a highway, and it's a crowded highway that you've chosen. And what I want to say on the first week of this brief series we're doing is we cannot live as Christians as followers of Jesus, as hopers. Man, we cannot live with this disconnect that our society has that says, as long as my intentions are good, and as long as my intentions are positive, and as long as I want to end up somewhere positive, it doesn't matter what road I take. Because in the final analysis, direction trumps intention. See, this kid had a lot of bright ideas, I'm going to be fine. And here in Proverbs, I'm going to be fine. It's all going to work out. Everything's going to be good for me. And Solomon says, no, it's not. It's not going to work out well. You've got it all wrong. You're like an ox to the slaughter. And I've got a, a list of things here, and I, I want us to just be thinking about this really quick, right? Here's the disconnect. Here's how we do it all the time. It's way bigger than just the situation this kid's in in Proverbs 7. It's much larger than that. Like, here's the idea. Like, it's like when a young lady says something like, you know what, I want to end up with a great Christian guy, a guy who's committed to Jesus and is going to be a great leader in our household, and he's going to work a job and have integrity, and he's going to be a phenomenal husband and father to my children. And so, man, that's really what I want in life. And so that's exactly what I want. I know that I want that. So I'm going to, I, um, I'm going to, um, I want my relationship to be like that, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go down this road. The road I've chosen is, I will go out with anyone who asks me out as long as they're cute. And somehow I think about, I think that going out with anyone that I ask out as long as they're cute, somehow is going to lead me to that destination. Nope. Because the road trumps the intention. How about this one? I want a family unit who just wants to be together man who just loves to vacation together. And I want to be so family-centered and that my kids, man, when they have kids, will all want to spend time together. And so what I'm going to do, because I want that so bad, I'm just going to work all the time. I want to spend so much time with my family who wants to be together that I'm going to be a workaholic to be this, so we can be this kind of family. 
But the road trumps intention because direction determines your destination every single time. How about this one? I've seen this one so many times, and I bet you have too. I've watched, there have been so many people in my office over the last 32 years, here's what they say. I, I've seen this kind of thing, this kind of, let, me, let me play the scenario out for you. I want my kids to respect me. And I want them to come to me for advice and wisdom. Man, I, I just, I'd love, and I would love to like, 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 like as my kids grow up and, and man, when they're thinking about career moves or thinking about buying that house or buying that land, or I, I want them to come talk. I would like to be like, like a statesman almost for our family. So, so I'm going to cheat on their mother. It's like, what? That's not going to gain respect. That's not going to lead to respect. And on down the road, you know what the guy's saying? I'm telling you, I've had this conversation so many times over lunch in some businessy area or in my office or in someone's house over and over and over. And the guy's saying, I don't understand why my kids won't call me. I don't understand why my kids won't have anything to do with me. Well, they're saying, I don't understand what happened. And I just would say, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. I'm not. But you chose to walk in a direction that led to the disrespect of your kids. And you're getting the disrespect of your kids. That's where that journey goes every time. That's where the road goes. And friends, what we start to think, whether it's our financial situation, whether it's raising our kids, whether it's our careers, professions, our health, right? Like somehow we just have a disconnect, right? I want to be healthy and I want to be fit and I want to do all those things. And so I'll meet you for lunch at the Chinese buffet, right? You know what I mean? It just doesn't work. That's not where the road goes, right? And we think we'll be an exception. You won't be. It's a road. And it doesn't matter how wealthy you are or how smart you are. If you get on I-55 North and you start driving, you know what a lot of people do? They thought, man, I'm, I'm not getting to Florida. I'm on I-55 North. I'm not getting to Florida. I know. I need to drive harder. I need to drive faster. Doesn't matter, does it? You will not get to Florida. So here's a big question. Are the roads that you're on in your life, are they going to get you where you want to go? Because in some cases, you know they're not. And some of you, you already have someone speaking to you about this, don't you? Someone's already talking to you about it. And the reason we're so enamored with the wrong road is maybe there's someone on that road and they have such an emotional appeal, not a rational appeal, but an emotional appeal. And, and, and it's such a strong emotional appeal, we get fixated on the immediate and not the ultimate. And man, and so, and, just, and it's not the ultimate. And so going on here, um, man, that's the kid in the story. Maybe for you it's a dollar sign. You got to make the deal. You, you got to get the promotion. Do you remember the story? Right? Don't let her get her hook in, in your heart. That's what Solomon said. Don't let her get her hook in your heart. But we're into the person. We're into the event. We're into the moment. And God says, listen, it's not about the moment. It's not about the immediate God says, man, it's about the ultimate. What road are you on? Man, that's why you should always listen to God and your mama. <laughs> you know? Because your mama would be in that window. Think about what your mama would be doing. Your mama would have been in that window, and she'd be throwing up that window. She wouldn't be watching from the window, watching the whole thing happen. She'd be saying, hey, you are about to make a huge mistake. And you need to stop and ask, is this really getting me? where I need to be. You may not feel like you're moving anywhere, but someone's come to you and they've raised a red flag to you and they've said something to you. And they're like the guy in the window and they're saying, hey, I think you're moving in a dangerous direction. And this principle, this concept, it works for you or against you. 
Man, some of you have been faithful for years and you've started to reap the benefits. And uh, you've been financially responsible. You've driven smaller. You've lived smaller. You, you didn't dress as nice. You stayed out of debt. And man, now, man, you're starting to, you're starting to reap the benefits. You're starting to see those kind of things. And God didn't just bless you overnight because you made a right decision. You've been on a road. And that road's been leading you to a destination. And direction determines destination. Not intention. Here's the question. When you think about your financial road, your relational road, your spiritual road, Man, some of the people I was talking about earlier, they might not have been thinking a lot about the road two weeks ago. But man, all three of those funerals I went to this week, you know what? The spiritual road, that road, I mean, these roads that you're on, they are incredibly important. So my question would be this, when it comes to your financial road, when it comes to your relational road, when it comes to your spiritual road, does that road take you where you want to be? Direction determines destination. Relationally, financially, spiritually, what direction are you headed? Could it be? Could it be that maybe you need to make some key adjustments and change your direction? Because unless Jesus is the destination you're headed to. Man, things in this life, things in the next life, it doesn't get any more important. And many of you in the room would say, Jesus is my, God is my destination. That's absolutely my intention. That's where I want to end up. But if you're walking a road that's the other direction, man, I just want to say, this is a moment to decide to change roads. I want to ask you to stand. And I want to ask you, if you need to surrender your life to Jesus, I want to encourage you to, to meet me down front. Because you can change roads today. You can get off the exit ramp, circle back around, and get on going God's way. And many of you need to do that. Let's not just listen to the word of God and so deceive ourselves. Let's do what it says. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, God, I thank you for um, all those that are gathered here in your name. Father, I pray that right now, if, those, if there are those of us here who need to just change roads, we need to respond to you and begin not just saying, I intend to go God's way, but I'm doing it. I'm going to walk the way of Jesus. Father, I pray that they'd surrender their lives and that we would all surrender to you in this moment as we introspectively consider what your word has said to us today by your spirit. And God, we lift all this to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. announcement we need to make in just a moment, so you guys are welcome to take a seat as we close out the service. I want to ask the elders to come on up here, if you would. And uh, man, a while back, uh, a few weeks ago, we talked about how Ralph Axe and Keith Warfield, um, we asked to be praying about them, and they've been sitting with us, as, uh, with our eldership, uh, for the last uh, several months. And uh, man, as, and as they just begin jumping into our eldership with us, um, man, we just wanted to take a minute and just pray. And I'm going to ask uh, Jeremy Crump to pray for us in just a second. And, uh, but man, um, I want to ask if you would, let's go ahead and stand together. 
as we just pray uh, for our eldership at this time. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts, God. Thank you. First off, thank you for such a, a beautiful day outside, God. It's um, while well, we're so blessed with your creation, God, and we just want to acknowledge you in that. But God, right now, I, I want to just lift up these two men, Ralph and Creed. God, we know that that you uh, that you call all of us to serve in your kingdom, God, according to the gifts that you've given us, Lord. And Lord, I, I just want to lift these two men as they begin to serve in, in a ministry here at Hope Church as leaders, as elders, as overseers, and as, as shepherds of your flock, Jesus. Uh, Jesus. And, and so... Lord, I, I just pray that you, you bless them in their ministry, God. I pray that you keep this calling fresh in their hearts each and every day, God. I pray that you renew them as they, as they move forward in their, in their work here. God, I pray that, uh, that they seek you daily and, and that they seek your wisdom and guidance as, as they provide spiritual guidance to others, God. And Lord, I, I pray that, uh, that you give them a sense of, of peace and that you give them joy in their work, and even, even when their work becomes difficult, God, knowing that you're with them throughout it all. And God, we, we thank you so much for all the blessings that you bestow upon us each and every day, God. I thank you for these men who are willing to stand up and serve in your kingdom, God. God, we love you. I pray all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Friends, thanks so much for being with us today. Um, man, I want to encourage you to maybe, guys, you want to head on downstairs. I want to encourage you guys to uh, come up, maybe just uh, thank the guys for serving and encourage them and continue to pray. Uh, friends, we love you tons. Uh, this concludes our service. Have an awesome day.